first of all, I just wanted to thank you for raising the missing piece, which is the knowledge creation system. And I think in your comments, you have highlighted elements. If we were to take that as a system from its really the uh, foundational level of individual studies and design of research all the way up to the meta-analysis aspect and how we communicate it and how we uh, value it and assess it. I think that that in and of itself would be an extremely useful exercise. But now I'm going to hop over to Anita because you have um, given us the foundation of knowledge creation. I'm going to move into workforce <laughs> Models and and uh, see you talk about interprofessional collaboration. Thank you. So in this current space, I work in the clinical and professional systems that um, impact our healthcare system. And I have to say, as an observer, that systems change is never easy. But it's particularly difficult when we don't have a shared vision of where it is we want to go. And so it's clear, though, I think that one thing that um, we can do is intentionally increase the health literacy of not just our patients, but of the providers, the payers, and the consumers, general consumers of oral health care. So I'd like to talk a little bit about health workforce since that's my area. So in 2007, when newspapers across the country carried the story of the death of 12-year-old Diamante driver from an apparent toothache, if you were a physician, a nurse, a physician assistant, or a pharmacist, you might have read the story, shook your head, and said, what a shame. Too bad they couldn't find a dentist. Well, those same providers now, 10 years later, are learning that by redefining the problem and defining it through the lens of an integrated care delivery system, they're very much an important part of that solution. So how did we get here? Well, in 2009, I was invited to a convening of um, funders, innovative health leaders for medicine and dentistry to consider how we might work together to support, really, an eradication of dental disease. Our theory was if that we could focus on integrating oral health care into the primary care practice of multiple providers, that we could create a paradigm shift, then that would have us think and work differently around oral health care. We knew that this paradigm shift of putting the mouth back in the body was not going to be easy. It was going to challenge our values and many of our basic assumptions and our different goals. But we thought we could create a new standard of oral health care. We knew that if we launched the National Interprofessional Initiative in Oral Health, which we did that year, that we could learn a lot about the role of health literacy in a lever, as a lever for change to accelerate through education and continuing education across our health professions. So we organize our NIOH activities around four key strategies. The first is cultivating leadership. Catherine talked about leadership in her presentation. The second really is facilitating interprofessional learning and agreement to try to gather some consensus on the part of our healthcare teams about how it is we want to do this and where we're going. The third is that we develop and support tools and resources that bridge culture and understanding, tools like Smiles for Life, that create a shared knowledge base and vocabulary across our health professions. And finally, we work with health, medical, and dental professional organizations to try to align their strategies and create actionable strategies for change that address creating this new standard of oral health care and I create an identity, really, of shared ownership for oral health so that we can work together in it professionally. You know, oral health literacy is really a key lever in all of our work. It's helping us change and grow the oral health workforce, and it's preparing us for what's coming, which is a changing paradigm that shifts our focus from treatment, really, to prevention, from individual care to population health, from a fragmented delivery system to really more integrated practice models that care not just for the mouth, but for the whole person and for all people. So I think we've made tremendous progress, and I hope we have more time to talk about that. 